All right, guys, so today we are going to be doing a Q&A. I thought this would be um, a lot of fun and something different that you guys don't normally see from me. I don't do a lot of Q&As, and um, I just was kind of curious to see what questions you guys might have, and um, we got a great response. I think we had probably close to 25 or 30 questions. Yeah, definitely. So I've got all my questions here. I'm going to be answering... Uh, maybe five or ten of them we'll see how much time we have um, and get through as many as we can so without further ado let's get into it all right so the first question i'm gonna answer here is from the bronson smith and it says opinion on keto it's hard for me because i want to lose weight but i love rice <laughs> don't we all we all love carbs um, so my opinion on keto. Um, keto, as you guys know, or in my opinion, is one of those fad diets. Um, I know some people really like keto and it works really well for them. Um, so again, these are just my opinions, guys, and I'm going to kind of give some um, background information on why I have the standpoint that I have. Keto, to me, is a fad diet. Um, it's not something typically sustainable long term. Um, keto, for those of you guys that do not know, um, that is primarily a uh, moderate to high protein diet, high fat diet, low or no carbs at all. Um, obviously, you would just have some trace carbs from some of your fat sources, but typically that's what a keto diet is. It's very, very high in fat. Keto, from a calorie standpoint, you're typically going to be taking in a lot more calories. We know that um, per gram of protein there's four calories per gram of carbs there's four calories but per gram of fat there is actually nine calories so it's more than double the amount of calories from fat that there is in carbs and protein so and what I typically find is people that say oh I've been doing keto but I can't I'm not I can't seem to lose weight um, those kind of things what I'll see is that they're having a very high fat diet, moderate to high protein and no carbs, but those fat calories are so, so high that typically you're not gonna be in a calorie deficit with fats really, really high or in a keto diet. Now there are some ways that a keto diet can work and that is when you base it around the calorie deficit. So as long as you're putting yourself in a calorie deficit, so less calories than you need per day, you can structure the macronutrients in such a way that it could be um, keto style diet and that could be more sustainable. Um, again, I just find that with carbs being our immediate energy source, oftentimes people that do keto for long stints will find themselves plateauing in two to four weeks or not having that much energy because of not having uh, any immediate energy source from carbs. So keto, in my opinion, is a great way to kickstart a diet sometimes, depending on the individual, but I don't think it's really sustainable long-term. Carbs are the way to go. But uh, this is from, <laughs> I hope I'm gonna get this right. It's from Cake Jelly. That's an interesting <laughs> username. Interesting. I'm probably butchering the hell out of that. Um, it says best supplements to help digestion. So that's a great question. Um, I'll go into a few different avenues with that. One is going to be digestive enzymes. And uh, most digestive enzymes are going to have compounds in them that will aid in protein digestion, carb digestion, um, fat digestion. So a digestive enzyme is a very good way to start. Um, you can have that at multiple meals throughout the day. Um, especially around meals that you might be feeling more bogged down from. Um, another couple supplements that are great for digestion would be um, apple cider vinegar. You can take an ounce or two of that in the morning. Um, that is a good probiotic, so that helps with um, gut health. Um, glutamine, Your there baby. we go, right there. Glutamine, um, and this is fermented glutamine, so this is... Very, very pure, um, great absorption with that, but that also helps coat the stomach lining. 
It helps um, nutrient uptake and food digestion. That's been, glutamine has been a fantastic um, addition to my digestive supplements that I take. I usually try to take about 10 to 15 grams of this per day. Um, and again, you guys can get, um, we have glutamine in our stack series on hostile.com. Um, let me think if there's any others that I, oh, another great one. Um, this is great for competitors uh, that are in a contest prep setting where acid reflux, um, indigestion might be coming more relevant. You could also take what's called betaine HCL. Um, that's been a great supplement that I've added in during a prep phase and even in um, certain off-season parts of my diet when I eat uh, maybe spicier foods. Those uh, definitely help as well. This one is from C. Sty 14 Sorry if I mispronounced that. I'm just going to apologize in general for all the usernames I'm going to mess up on this. Some are weird. Some are. Some are strange. Um, this says, show off the new tat. Got any more in mind? So, I don't know if you guys can see that. Of course, I probably need to put some lotion on, but yeah, this is the new tattoo I just got. It's a tiger. Um, yeah, I think it's, it honestly is probably my favorite tattoo so far as far as the detail goes. Um, it fit really well in this spot on my forearm. Um, I've got a little bit more to fill in here. I'm not exactly sure what I want to get done there yet. Um, and then... Other than that, though, I don't have a ton of tattoo ideas in mind right now. Um, I'm definitely not going to go any higher than my elbow um, for bodybuilding purposes. So not until I'm done competing, which is probably a decade from now. <laughs> the long run. It's a long, right, it's a long way. So um, that's a new tat. Really, really enjoy it. It, uh, it hurt. This one hurt a lot. It took um, five and a half hours. And um, a lot of the shading and going over and detailing, um, yeah, it was a pretty painful one. Probably not as bad as the hand tat, though. The hand tat was pretty rough. Uh, this is from Hostile's own fittest Ash ever, uh, Ashley Lakomowski. Appreciate you asking the question. It's a really good question, actually. She says, what are the pros and cons of owning a gym? So... We're going to take a slight break, and I'm going to think about this. I'm going to come back with some good answers. So, uh, wrapped my head around this because, so again, Ashley asked, um, what are the pros and cons of owning a gym? And, um, man, there is a lot, there's a lot of things to unpack with that question. So I tried to narrow it down to three pros and three cons. Um, and I'm not going to talk about, obviously there's pro, the pros, some of the other pros that I'm not going to mention are things like, you know, owning my own gym and having, being able to put whatever equipment I want in my own gym and those kind of things. So, but those are all more of the materialistic things. And I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more in depth of the pros and cons that um, maybe you guys don't see or you wouldn't think about uh, if you owned a gym. Um, and again, we've only been open for eight months, so I don't have a ton of experience with owning a gym. Um, but these are some of the things I came up with. For the pros, the first thing that always comes to my mind is uh, impact. And it's really, really um, fulfilling to me is the impact that I have had and this gym has had on other members. And um, just a perfect example is I've had... Time and time again, members come up and tell me that this gym saved their life, that AMF had changed their life in some form or fashion, whether they were addicted to drugs or alcohol or um, having a bad home life or they hate their job. People have constantly come up to tell me and, and my staff and my family how much of an impact the gym has had on their life. And that, to me, is the most soul fulfilling thing of being able to provide and have an impact on other people's lives in a positive manner. Um, also an impact on my family. My mom quit her job of 20 years. Um, she was a manager at a title company. She was there for 20 years. She left her job to invest in this and be our director of operations. So 
I got to help my mom leave an unhappy job that she was working 12 to 15 hours a day behind a desk and now she gets to work you know normal hours with the family and all the friends and members so that's been very rewarding for me as well um, another pro is accomplishment this gym um, was a two-year endeavor exactly two years to the day of when we first walked in Tyler and myself, which I think um, we're going to put on screen for you guys to see the first photo I ever took in American Muscle Factory before it was AMF. Um, it was with me and Tyler Whitlow, who is my business partner, my best friend of 16 years. Um, it was two years of work. So I think, you know, you guys see in that photo and how bare it was and it was just brick walls and a concrete floor. And then to see what it is now, um, and I think we can probably put some yeah. pictures up of that as well, so you guys can see what it looks like in in AMF right now. Um, it's a very big sense of accomplishment for me, um, and I don't mean that in vain. It's just it was two years of working that turned into this. So that's a huge thing for me as well as the the accomplishment that I feel in myself from the hard work that was put in. Um, the last pro. Uh, is working for myself. You know, I don't have to answer to anyone. I was sick the last couple days and I could just, you know, clear my books and stay home and try to rest. Um, and having the freedom to travel when I want to travel and do what I want to do and go where I want to go um, is a huge, a huge pro for me. Obviously, um, when you work for yourself, the work is a lot harder and it's a lot more demanding. Um, and it doesn't usually shut off so it's it's that double-edged sword but I think working for myself is is really uh, something that I enjoy some of the cons um, one is going to be monetary stress so especially with this gym being a newer endeavor there is a lot of financial and monetary stress that went into this and is still currently we're battling through with any new business um, another con is um, having to rely on others. And this is something I learned through the two years of, of putting this thing together. It's very difficult when you call on contractors or call on electricians or plumbers, and I'm not pointing anyone out in particular, I'm just saying in general, you know, flooring contractors, X, Y, and Z. When you have to rely on those people to do a certain job in your facility, and they don't pull through, you're kind of left high and dry. And it makes it very, very difficult and extremely stressful um, because then you're left to pick up the pieces. And when there's money, lots of money involved, tens of thousands of dollars, and there's people's time involved, um, also deadlines like with our gym and when we needed to have things built out, when you're relying on other people and they don't pull through, it makes it very, very difficult and stressful in a business setting. So that's one con that I have. Um, and then the last one, and this is just me personally, and I, I don't want this to come off um, bad by any means because I, it's, again, this is kind of a double-edged sword, but the other con is distractions. And what I mean by that is um, with me being a pro, you know, having placed fifth at the Olympia, um, starting to get the name, you know, the recognition that I have. It's worked great for this gym because it's brought a lot of attention and helped us grow the gym as quickly as we've grown it. However, that also has caused a lot of distractions. And what I mean by that is when I come into the gym, um, if I have certain things I need to do at certain times of the day, um, if I get caught talking, you know, whether it's to my staff or I get caught talking with um, other members, um, it can kind of push the day back pretty quickly. And, and again, I love giving that time to our members and I'm, I'm so extremely appreciative of everyone wanting to chat, but that's just something that I deal with is it gets a little difficult sometimes if I get stopped, you know, four or five, six times in a matter of an hour of me walking in, it's that can push my whole day back pretty quickly. So, um, and that just maybe comes down to a little bit more of time management on my part. Um, 
but that is something that, that I deal with as a con. So, Ashley, that was a great question, and I really appreciate you asking that. Lots of questions. There's a lot of questions, so I'm trying to, trying to weed through which ones would be um, great for you guys to hear. Um, this one says, this is from con.mpuppas. Puppas. 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 I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Sorry. It says, how do you cook slash prep all your meals? Um, thankfully, now I do not have to do much meal prep. I'm with a company called Zilla Meals, and they actually are my food prep sponsor. You guys can check them out at zillameals.com. Um, they have amazing, amazing um, products and offerings for you guys as far as food goes, but that has been a huge, huge time saver for me is um, being able to just order my food with Zilla and I've got all my chicken, all of my beef or turkey. Um, I usually get salmon as well, some potatoes, so that's really nice. But before I had Zilla, I think it's important to tell you guys this, I used to break it up and do meal preps twice a week. And that always worked really, really well for me. I would meal prep on Sundays, which is my rest day, and I would meal prep again on Wednesday, which was my rest day. And I don't like prepping for a full week in advance because you guys that might be doing that, you might realize how difficult it is to prep for a whole entire week in one, one sitting. You'll end, up being cook, you'll end up cooking for five hours, six hours. So that is too... My camera guy is nodding his head right now, <laughs> Christian. He gets it. So, and a lot of you guys are probably doing that because you have busy lives, you have kids. Um, but I implore you to try to prep meals a couple times throughout the week. Um, it'll it'll shorten the amount of prep time that you have. It will also keep your food more fresh. Those of you guys that are prepping a, a week at a time know what it's like eating six day old cooked chicken that's been in so the dry. fridge. So, so dry. dry. <laughs> So dry, nobody wants that. So that's how I used to do it. I would prep on Sundays and Wednesdays, and that always worked really, really great for me. Um, my current training split. This is from Mickey underscore C92, and it says current training split, question mark. Um, my current training split is kind of that bro or pro split or whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't even know. Like I've heard so many different coined names, the bodybuilder split, whatever. Um, and it's worked extremely well for me. I change it usually a little bit depending on if I'm in off season or contest prep. Um, but an off season, uh, training split for me is going to look like, uh, Monday I'll do a chest and usually one tricep exercise Tuesday. I will do back one, bicep exercise and abs. Wednesdays, I take a rest day. Thursdays, I have been training shoulders and abs. Friday, I train arms. Saturday, I train my full leg day, and then Sunday, I have off. So it's a five-day split with two rest days. Again, those are Wednesday and Sunday. Um, it's a split that I've done for a very long time. However, I will say this for you guys that are maybe beginners. I do highly recommend if your legs are your weaker um, body part to split up your leg training. So that's where, again, uh, I used to train hamstrings separate from quads when I was really trying to develop my legs. Now I can get by with just one leg day per week. And then when I get in a contest prep setting, I go to six days training per week and I add the hamstring day back in on Wednesdays. This one is, this question is from Caleb Cargus. And it says, advice for guys wanting to get started with coaching. This is a very loaded question, but I think it's important to um, kind of hit on a couple things with this one. Um, honestly, just start with wanting to help people. That's how I started. It just, I felt I was getting a lot of people reaching out, asking fitness questions. I knew a good amount. Um, so start with the intent of just looking to help people. If you go into coaching looking to make money and make a living, it's a quick way to hit failure because you're, you're driven by the wrong thing. When you're driven by money, the success is not going to be there typically. 
So just go into it with an open mind of, I want to learn how to help people. Um, the other advice I would give you is research. Um, try things on yourself as far as like your supplementation, maybe your dieting, like learn, like what foods are working, what foods are not. Um, try different things with your training. So try to become more well-versed in what you want to then coach. And then when you get to the point that you feel like you can start helping people, um, just do that. I coached people for free when I first started, or I only charged like 50 bucks a month. So it was just, for me, it was, I didn't ever, ever think about the money aspect of coaching. I had another full-time job. It was completely just, I just want to see how I can help people. And I think that's what's made coaching so rewarding for me and so fun. And I've seen that it can be scalable, and I've seen that it can be a way you can make a living. But you've got to go at it from the standpoint of, I want to help others. Here we go. This one is from David Romero. I think it's Romero. There's a lot of M's and a lot of E's, so hopefully I got that right. This says tips and what has worked for you to improve the quads, bro. And he's got a couple emojis you guys will see there. This one and then the turkey leg. Um, so I'm going to say top three main tips for quad growth is um, rep execution, so being perfect with your reps and sets, taking them all the way to failure, and not being scared to go to that point, because Christian will probably <laughs> agree with this one yep. too, it's very, very hard mentally and physically to go all the way to failure with a set of hack squats or a set of pendulum squats or even back squats, whatever leg movement you're doing, legs are very taxing on the CNS and so central nervous system. And so you want to make sure that you're really, really pushing them. That's, that's the big thing. You've got to make sure that you're annihilating the legs. Don't be afraid to ask for a spot too. Right, right. Don't be afraid to ask for a spot. So anyway, that's the top three I'd say is rep execution, um, taking your sets to failure and um, exercise selection is probably another another big one. So this is from Sam Eichelberger. He is a member at our gym. I appreciate you asking a question. It says things you found to help with appetite. Um, man, there's uh, there's a couple ways, actually a lot of different ways you can go about that. For one, if you're having appetite issues, it could be your food selection. So you may want to reevaluate what foods you're eating. Um, if you're finding that your appetite is suppressed at certain times throughout the day, it might be an indicator that certain foods are not working with your body. Um, the other thing is digestive enzymes. So what we talked about earlier, um, putting in digestive enzymes or some probiotic style um, supplements like apple cider vinegar, those all might help. You could add in a uh, low intensity steady state cardio um, four to five times a week at you know, 20, 25 minutes that would help bring your appetite and metabolism up slightly. So I would start with those and I think